Judd Trump is halfway towards picking up his first Champion of Champions title, having recovered from losing the opening three frames to win five on the bounce. Crucially, though, John Higgins secured the final frame of the afternoon to mean we're finally poised at 5-4 going into this evening. Hello, a very good evening. Welcome back. We have a fabulous Sunday night of snooker to look forward to in the company of Stephen Hendry and Neil Folds. It's the Champion of Champions final. And from the afternoon, Stephen, very difficult mm. to pick a winner at this stage. They know each other well. They've played each other in a lot of big matches. The honours are even 13 apiece. But crucially, Judd has had the better of John Higgins in their last six meetings. How much will that weigh on John's mind tonight? Um, I definitely think it can do before you approach a big match. If you've not got a good recent record against someone, it definitely puts you on the back foot a little bit. Um, but it obviously didn't affect John the start he had. He went to race to a 3-0 lead. Um, but I think when Judd started to come back into it, um, John seemed to go backwards quite quickly, which is, which is worrying. So that's why the last frame was so important for him to win. Yeah, Judd's full of confidence uh, when he takes on the top players. Now, you know, we heard him in his interview before the final saying when he plays his best, he has no fear for the likes of Higgins or Sullivan. He gets the better of them. Well, that's true. Um, but I haven't seen a great deal of evidence of him being at his real best for any l sustained period of time. But, you know, he did come back very well today. 3-0 down. John looks, looks strong. I thought maybe the edge was off his game. You know, Judd didn't... Uh, he played Friday night, don't forget, so he had more time to recover. He looked fresher as the session went on. But ultimately, there's still only one frame between them. So there's everything to play for. I agree that Judd has had the better of things, but that's, that's in the past. Let's look at the way the momentum switched back and forth in this match and the way that John Higgins started out. John started as if it was just like he'd carried on from where he left off last night against Yan Bing Tao. Yan Bing Tao is the hard man of snooker. He almost John shouted John up. He, he couldn't have put him any further behind that yellow. I mean, he had so many attempts at this. I think eight. He hit the black once. This is the eighth. And in the end, it wasn't a question of him just keeping on until he hit it. John just thought, hang on a minute, he's left wow. a red to the middle here, so he's playing the proper snooker, won the frame. There was 80-odd in it with still a number of reds left, you know. Um, I thought he was distracted here. He got up once, looked at something, minor thing in the crowd. I don't know what it was, and that makes the shot a lot more difficult. He's not in the match, he's 2-0 down anyway. And this shot, I said at the time, you know, like almost a dead ball situation. I think Mark Selby would have put his opponent in trouble there. I don't know whether Judd went for the double. Whatever he went for, it cost him the frame. 3-0 down was not looking good. Yeah, 3-0 down, and then Trump mm. crucially won that final frame before the mini interval. Yeah. And then he went on to win for the bounce. It was uh, you know, a great comeback from Trump. Yeah, it was. I mean, it wasn't vintage Trump. I mean, his highest break of the afternoon was 63. And I think he was kind of battling the cue ball, I think, for a lot of, lot of his breaks. You know, he didn't seem to have it under control. So a lot of times, you know, he was going up to for blues or, or, or up for bolt colours. Um, but he did what he had to do. He got himself back into the match and he had the momentum um, fully um, at 5-3. It um, went for a red that was debatable, possibly. He didn't have to go for it and, and let John in to, to win that last frame. But um, generally, I mean, he's, he, he was a stronger player, but still nowhere near his best, I don't think. Um, you know, when Judd Trump's at his best, he would have probably had two or three centuries this afternoon. He hasn't done. He's not scoring as heavily as he can. Neither is John, to be fair. But... When he got on top, it was, it was worrying to me how John seemed to kind of wither a little bit under the pressure. It'd be interesting to see if, how, 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 if Judd starts well tonight, if that happens again. Yeah, the last couple of years, when Trump gets into a final, nine times out of ten, he's going to win that final. Yeah. In fact, ten times out of ten, he's going to win the final. John Higgins has been in a couple of finals this season, has missed out in deciding frames. He's never lost three finals back to back in a season that he's been into. So, uh, will, again, will that be preying on his mind? Well, I was wondering that because not only you talk about a season, we're talking about very recently, you know, it was only last month when he lost 4-4 four, four at the first session, the first to, to nine in Belfast, and he got to the front in the evening session 8-6 and lost, and he was 5-3 down against um, uh, Neil Robertson a couple of weeks ago in the English in Milton Keynes, got to the front in the evening session and lost. Now, look, he's a brilliant player and he's very strong mentally, but if he got to the front tonight, those flashbacks might return. Well, the crowd have been fantastic all week here in Bolton and they are in their seats. Huge anticipation for the climax of the week here. The players are going through their final preparations ahead of this evening's session. Watching on from the practice room, Rob Walkers with Ken Doherty. Thanks, Jill. What a brilliant vantage point for what promises to be a brilliant climax to the week between two of the all-time greats. And they may have been born 14 years apart, but there is nothing to separate these two in terms of ability and accolades. Kent Doherty, 1997 world champion, in spite of all they've achieved, 
these are nervy moments. Yeah, nervy moments. I mean, it's just sort of loosening up, you know, the goosebumps are, you know, getting ready for them and they're really excited. I mean, just spoke to John there, the atmosphere is electric, you know, he's already, you can already hear the bubble of the crowd outside. They just want to get out there and hit some balls, you know. Now, just here, the few minutes before, they're just loosening up, casting a little light on each other in the background as well. Is it simply about trying to stay relaxed in these last two minutes yeah absolutely i mean these guys have been in this situation many many times you know but it, it's sort of you still look forward to it you look forward to the nerves you look forward to the goosebumps because this is why they play this game because they love going out into the atmospheres like that trying to win that beautiful cup and that trophy and uh, i'm sure they just can't wait to get out there and so much of world-class sport is about desire and we look for the motivations for victory. They're huge for both of them. Judd's trying to make it third time lucky in a Champ of Champs final. And we've already been talking about John. We should keep our voices down. He's just behind us. John's <laughs> trying to avoid a third final defeat this mm, season. Yeah. Massive motivation for yeah. both of them. Yeah, absolutely. It's never happened to John before, losing three finals in a row. And of course, Judd, you know, he's been on that wonderful run of like finals, I think 15 for May Day, which is an incredible record. Both of them have an insatiable, you know, appetite for winning and being on the winner's rostrum and that's what keeps driving them forward and John even after all these years he still wants to be the best and still wants to win and it's fantastic Judd Trump I think it's nicely poised this final it could go all the way we could be in for a cracker tonight we certainly could <laughs> I've got to ask you to step off the fence I know you've got massive respect for both <laughs> yeah. of them have you got an instinct uh, I've got an instinct that's going to go very close 10-9 either way hopefully on the black ball how's that Rob <laughs> <laughs> I'll take that. Tell you what, Jill, we cannot wait for this big night in Bolton. Great stuff. Thank you very much, fellas. Um, Stephen, Judd Trump wants to win this one. Mm. He's made the final a couple of times, hasn't been able to lift the trophy. Um, he, he talks about it being the fourth master. It would mean a lot to him. Yeah, I, th I think so. I think he's going to come out, um, find another gear tonight. It's what he's normally done in finals. When questions are asked, he answers them emphatically. Um, I think he's going to win this tonight about 10-7. I think he's going to come out and, and perform tonight. So that is your prediction, a 10-7 Trump victory. That's what it is. What, would, what advice would you give to John Higgins <laughs> then tonight if uh, that's what Stephen is knows, telling us? He needs no advice from me. He's one of the greatest players of all time. Um, I don't think that the tiredness will come into it. I think that John overall is, you know, look, he's been in the last two finals. Everyone knows that. But, he, but Judd hasn't been in the last two finals. And John is as sharp as anyone right now. Mm. You know, he's got so much going for him in what he's achieved. He's done a lot of matches. I agree it's going to be very close. I just think that the way that those afternoon frames, that five in a row, um, you know, that Judd took has made him favourite. So I think he might lift it for the first time tonight. I'm going to ask you for a prediction of the scoreline because I always do. Well, again, I, listen, it, this has to go close. I think it could go. I agree with Ken. I think 10-9. Not about on the black. I'm not that, um, I can't <laughs> see that far ahead of, in the future. <laughs> Good stuff. Well, we got all the way to deciding frame last night as well. Thrilling stuff. Uh, OK, coming up on the other side of the break, we'll get the second session of this final underway as we move one step closer to crowning the 2021 Champion of Champions.
who will get their hands on that trophy. The crowd are in their seats here and it's finally balanced at the University of Bolton Stadium where Judd Trump starts this evening with a slender one frame advantage in the race to ten. In the commentary box, Alan McManus is alongside Phil Yates, but first here's Tahir Hajat to welcome the players. Snooker fans all around the world, welcome back to the University of Bolton as Matchroom Multisport is proud to present the second session of the final of the Kazoo Champion of Champions! 5 4, the score, all to play for, ladies and gentlemen. Let's leave no time wasted. Please welcome to the arena, the Wizard of Wishaw, John Higgins! And of course, his opponent, ladies and gentlemen, the ace in the pack, Judd Trump! resounding success but only one of these two players will regard it as a success the other will leave disappointed we'll discover which is which as the evening progresses Go on. can't help thinking you know over the years Alan the vast majority of finals are played over two sessions and so often a winner says yeah it was winning that last frame in the afternoon that made all the difference will it be the case for John Higgins this evening because certainly things were slipping. Thank you the 10th frame, John Higgins to break. Yeah, we're about to find out. Good evening, everyone. The group stages long gone, semi-finals long forgotten, as indeed was that afternoon session, but you're right, Phil, it was a big frame for John to close out this afternoon, but it's all about this evening. Oh, what a start to One. Well, in the sense that reds Eight. are on, it's worked that split, but of course he didn't want the the pink to go pretty much out of the reckoning under that ball cushion. Nine. Sixteen. Seventeen. Yeah, it's a smart shot playing for the red up table. 
gives them guaranteed 24 optimum angle on this blue Twenty-five. If the shot goes to plan, the first frame of the session could be over very quickly. That would not have worked out any better. What a statement. First up. His break off's been good this week. Not good enough. Frame one tonight. Thirty one. Thirty-eight. So far, it's been a typical break of you know, Trump. possesses so much armory that the long red and then cue balls singing around the table two or three times. But when he gets into this sort of position, this is where he really excels. Keeping that cue 46. ball. Under a tight rein. Forty seven. See an example here, not sure if that top red does pass, but you know, if it does, you play for two for the price of one, as is the way the top players. 52. Yeah, I'm not interested in it, but can play this right handed, no problem. 52. Surprised if he didn't. Just looking for. Which should be a guaranteed low angle off this next black to bring some reds into the game. Fifty three. No need for extravagant cue ball movement on this, it's, it's like a dead stun through the end red almost hit a dead cue ball just push it through a few inches 60 Nothing appeals greatly. Nothing's a gimme. Sixty-one. Well, that takes a little bit of pressure off, putting a red close to the right hand side cushion. I told you it might be quick. This is frame ball coming up. Seven minutes played in the frame.
to 74. Judd Trump, 74. Well, that's Judd Trump's highest break of the match so far, superseding a 63 in the fourth frame, but Higgins retains just enough interest in the frame to carry on. I think one more red and that would have been that. One. Nine. Simply has to pop this. John Higgins, nine frames and two in frames of Trump. John Higgins looks around and said, that's enough for me. And so, for the second time in the match, Judd Trump has a two-frame gap. More great entertainment? That's just the job. Welcome back to the final of the Kazoo Champion of Champions at the University of the Bolton Stadium. Frame. Judge, Judge Trump, Trump leads Alan McManus 6-4. It's been almost a daily occurrence that the snooker at night has been better than that in the day. Well, the early evidence suggests that trend might continue. The first frame of the session was the shortest of the match and Trump's 74 break was the highest of the match.
and that first frame of the evening will feel good for Judd. Almost feel in some sort of way of a like a bonus frame because John effectively didn't really take part in it. Nice if you can chalk off a few of those, stress free, and getting the confidence going at the same time. Obviously, see John and Judd limbering up just behind Rob and Ken with a, having the chat. I was talking to Judd about that yesterday. He's a guy who likes to be active right up till kickoff time. Some players, not so much. Some players are happy to go in, have a Maybe 15, 20 minute listener and then go back to the dressing room or wherever they spend time. But Judd Trump, as I say, likes to keep his arm going through the cue ball and just keeping busy playing as long as he possibly can. Paid off in frame one tonight. One. Yeah, I didn't know a lot about that bonus ball. Just the tuck in. So Trump won. Not a flicker of a, an apology, and I personally like that because it's overdone these days. Just get on with it. John doesn't want him to apologise. He just wants to, to play the game. He knows the score. the second time this week Alan I will say the most irritating phrase in snooker whatever you do don't hit the blue you hear it thousands of times but it does actually mean something makes such a huge difference that distance pot for Judd and the pink's waiting here. It's whether he wants to gamble playing for black. I wouldn't think so. But he has done. One. Any reason it suggested maybe spin round for pink? Not a certainty this. He's going to have to inject a little bit of pace in it. Yeah. Didn't try to overdo it. Quite happy to recycle the cue Eight. ball, a little sortie upwards, top end of the table.
again, very smart. He looked at pink Aye. and thought, maybe I could stick on pink, but the pot was made easier, the fact he could play up towards the bulk colours. Not a problem with his cue power, getting up and down. Twelve. Thirteen. Now clearly the two reds in the open, neither will go to left corner. So he's been forced into leaving himself this red, the left middle. 19. And the pot's difficult enough. He's going to be moving a few reds around. Once again, 20. he didn't overplay the shot. Brilliant. Accepted that he was not going to be top side of the pink. And much like the blue when he sp split the reds in the previous frame, if this 26 is played correctly, another frame could go rapidly. 27. Almost a little nudge. 34. Substantial enough, I think. He does have an alternative. 35. Alan, this isn't a conventional break, he's just 42. playing conservatively in terms of position, and I think it's exactly the right tone. 43. Yeah, I was thinking the exact same thing, Phil. It's one of those breaks he's working 43. his socks off to keep it going. Hmm. Now then. It's a pink that he wouldn't want to turn down, but it, it might be the prudent move to push the brown safe. That's what he's thinking. I was also talking tactics with Judd yesterday for a little while. You know what else he thinks about? When he's pushing one of these colours safe, if he does, he considers, is my opponent right-handed or left-handed? That's why he might push the green to the right side cushion. Bramble. Choosing brown. Be 
because he could try and get Trump cover. 43. Big 43. Long gone are the days when these top players think, right, I'll just push a colour safe. No, 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 no. Think about the best way to do it. These two players met in the World Championship a decade ago. Boy, Trump has really evolved into a, a very different player from then. A much more lethal player. So many weapons in the Trump arsenal now, Alan. And what's more, he knows when to use them. Yeah, the simple fact is he pays so much attention to that side of the game now, he embraces it, as he should do. Muted applause. John wasn't quite sure whether he'd left the red. He looked at Trump's face to try and find out. Yeah, from John's One. side of things, it was a little unlucky to leave that gap, wasn't it? But I suppose the flip side of that was Judd put him in behind the, the brown and fully have expected to get this chance. Six. Placed a similar shot to this this afternoon and undercut it. No problem this time, and all traffic is avoided. <laughs> Easy to drop in one. I mean, it, with his power, I suppose he could force two cushions and into them. That's a good line. He doesn't really want to play for the plant that he looked at first time round. Almost playing that as if you're playing for a black off the spot. See that with a cue ball? Players will do that sometimes just to try and get it low enough, wow. he's on this red Trump basically a red and a colour away from 7-4 13 Yeah, the pink to far corner is, is well, 
probably 49 out of 50, but the pink into the middle, and he can park the cue ball. Is the correct shot. Nineteen. Judd Trump, nineteen. The lead is sixty three. Fifty nine on the table, so this is recoverable. Eight. Nine. So of these 16. two reds, he needs one of them with a black, and then if he gets a four-point penalty yeah. snooker, a successful one, he could possibly force a respotted black. Seventeen. Twenty four. Scupper now and buy the kiss on the green. Yeah, there wasn't an awful lot he could do about that. He's got to get the cue ball in behind Brown, but that should put paid to frame 11 and it has one looks concerned and he's got every right to be going three frames behind against Joe Trump is not recommended six Eight. So Trump eight and the frame. We've started the evening and now for the first time in the match, substantial daylight is between these two great champions. Another enter.
There's a place reserved in the gigantic trophy cabinet of Judd Trump for that piece Frame of silverware. John Higgins to break. Right now, there's every likelihood that place will be filled. Trump hasn't won a title since the Gibraltar Open in March. You'd never call that a drought for most people. For him, by his standards, it is. John trying to be aggressive, figure of eight, get some reds in the open. Green, brown, big target. Didn't quite get the pace in it. How good's that shot? All right, he's maybe going to be unlucky. He stuck a red, but it was aggressive. Played it thick with check up behind those two. This time he's obviously pushed a red over the corner. That's why the modern game, the top players and most players tend to play thin off the bunch for this very reason. Credit to the table fitters. That one didn't deviate at all. Low black pushed the red away from the black spot. Sixteen, and that irritates. Now, he's got a gap. If he's got a gap, with it, which it looks like he has, he's extremely fortunate because that was pretty much end of break. But for this gap,
17. Take all you get out there, because it won't last. Everyone concentrates on outlandish flukes and cruel in offs. 19. But it's that kind of subtle piece of luck that can often be absolutely crucial. Twenty. Twenty-six. Yeah, I couldn't agree more on that point, Phil. It is. It's those little pieces of good fortune. can turn a break of 16 into, well, 80, 90, whatever. Forty. Forty-one. He was stretching a little there, not the cleanest pot. Cue ball has gone farther away from the pink than makes him 100% comfortable. Now, is this risk? Is this red worth the risk? That's what he's thinking. He's looking at the lie of the land, and he knows if he misses it, there's every chance Judd could clear from this position. Waiting to pounce. Not even all that easy to push a red safe. John Higgins, yeah, forty seven. But he's left one far from easy.
Yeah, it's a mini gamble. We're raising the butt here. Play the pot to left middle. He didn't really expect to get the pot, but a great effort. Good percentage shot. If only realised the the potential benefit of that one going in. Couldn't disguise his disappointment. John trying to nestle both reds onto the cushion. Pretty good. Terrific white, just a shame from Trump's viewpoint, another red goes close to a cushion. Hence, the comeback for him becomes a little bit more difficult. Yeah, John knows he's probably never going to lose this frame in one hit but if Judd gets first chance here and takes four or five reds with decent sized value colours maybe makes 20, 25 something like that then John needs the reds by the cushion so it's two cushion glance chance of catching both reds the one near the right middle also it's on that line. So Judd has his chance. Not a brilliant one. A chance to eat into that lead. One. Five. Eleven. Twelve. If Higgins were to lose this frame, and of course there's plenty of snooker left before that becomes a reality. But if he were... What a blow it would be. Eighteen.
19. One of those you you almost well you don't play for the the gap, but you sort of do and you hope to get one or t'other. You got neither, but he has made twenty five. So all of a sudden, John Higgins does need a trump twenty five. Yeah. At least three of these reds. Different game now. There on the right hand side is Judd's right hand man, Jack Trump. Really good player in his own right. And a good golfer as well. Actually, the way this frame is now, I got a chance to spend some time with Judd yesterday and we're talking shop and this sort of situation, he, he, we had a chat about it. The point is that the red's been on the cushion, he knows and he's well aware that eventually the reds will come out of their own accord. There's never any panic. You get everything out in the open. This will be close to the cross double. Expect him to be very close to this. Not this time, but again, perfect cue ball. Just the space of what four or five visits. It feels like John's now in the back foot. It never fails on the final night. The intensity always cranks up. This is no exception. Not seen too many closely contested frames in this final. When there is one, it becomes all the more significant. One. Joe Trump won. He really is Alan, a, a different animal. Yeah, it's not just the it's not the ability to play the shots. That's not in question. It's understanding, as you said earlier, Phil. 
when to play them. He's got it all. Every time John's come to the table since that 47 nil lead, he's had a problem to deal with. Here's another. Foul. And a miss. To Trump full. Foul. And a miss. Well, closer, but still no contact. Trump four. And what about a free ball? Free ball. Yeah, and look where the brown is. For possibilities of bringing those two reds into the game. Yeah, he's coming down for a look now. Boy, this is a big shot. Yellow. Yellow ball. To leave an off straight brown if this works out we could have a new favourite needs to run and it has one playing the cannon on the, the red nearest the cushion gives him every chance of releasing both here we go then Got it. Not perfect. But this next shot, boy, this is a big one. Five. You see all these smashing pots and raking reds from distance? They are the sort that the men from the boys. It's just wonderful snooker, that's what it is. Ten. said before there was never any panic 11. never any hurry to get reds in the open you keep playing the smart shot and eventually the chance will come to get them in the open and now he has it if he wins this frame it will be one of the most satisfying Trump's 17. played all week if not the most Eighteen. So, five in front now, Trump, from 47 adrift at his lowest ebb. Make that 11, which means yellow, green and brown will be sufficient. 24. Twenty six. Twenty nine. Yeah, frame ball then. The final thing I'll say about getting spending time with him yesterday is that winning frames like this. Thirty three. 
he admitted to me that he really enjoys it and why wouldn't you this has been a 38. master class of the beautiful game the second half of this frame for Higgins an unpalatable taste of his own medicine Good from 51 and the when frame. When you get to a four in a race to ten, you can't say that's the killer blow. Well, you can say it was a hammer blow. Trump, superb. More great entertainment. That's a big tick from me. Trust a trader. Sponsoring ITV4 early. The wizard of Wishaw, John Higgins, right now, needs to pull a metaphorical rabbit out of the hat. The ace in the pack is in danger Thank you, frame of 13. comprehensively Jeff trumping to break. the four-time world champion. Bit of interest here in a five ball plant. There it is. It's difficult to tell because when you've got four or five reds in a line, but they're not in a line, if you see what I mean, it's, it's not easy to predict the offset rule. You're catching 
the middle red of the fire, he's, he's a bit bewildered by it, and I can understand why. The middle red of the five is hitting somewhere around half ball, which may offset the plant. It's quite an unusual one, so that's why he's not convinced about playing it. Again, the main thing is to get a good white. It's not a spectacular white, but it's into bulk. And problems created again. Just under constant pressure, that's all it is. Being denied table time and opportunity, every time he comes to the table, he's worried about what he's going to leave, Judd. Yeah, I feel your pain out there, pal. You're having a tough time. Got to try and hang in there. One. The red's pre-developed in many respects. This is the kind of situation in which Trump routinely thrives. Six. Seven. Wow. I said today in the studio for me with Judd these days it's not it's not about the centuries in the 90s it's not about those kind of numbers it's about the overall quality of the package of his whole game that is impressing me the most Twenty. Perfectly comfortable to win a 21. frame in two, even three visits, if the, the need arises. Because he'll win plenty of others in one visit. This might be one of them. Twenty-eight. Twenty-nine. He's played so many finals, though, he knows his concentration can't afford to slip. 44. Now, earlier, 44. Higgins was fortunate to find a gap. Has Trump been equally fortunate? No.
Yeah, for once his cue ball has let him down. He's been turning maybe up the way. Most of the way. Oh, just the near jaw. Now then. Jed Trump, Nothing four. easy for John Higgins, but he's going to have to dig really deep here. This red to the far corner. We know he's got it within him. Can he find something? Yes. If this goes in, it could be a turning point. <laughs> Roll reversal from the previous frame now, isn't it? In a way, decent lead for Judd. did actually yeah yeah half ball there was no risk really to it if he did what a dig out that was Judge Trump won Higgins one mistake away from going five down with six to play. Yeah, he, he can't see a drop in. Drop in dead weight is no good. He's going to have to play half ball, the red nearest to black. Try and get it half ball on the low side. Foul. And a miss. Judd Trump, four. I'm afraid at the moment he's just been completely outplayed. Every department. It's that simple. One. Just crept in. There are far more nuanced statistics than these, but pot success Eight. tells you a story. And look at that, the safety success of Trump is superior to the master tactician. Nine. Yeah, the thing about his game, that, that there's no part of it where you can sit in John's chair and think, right, I'm going to change this up here and maybe leave him a few of these or a few of those or a bit more aggressive. Like, he <laughs> can't think of anything. It's been, as I say, completely outplayed. 
No shame in it. But Forty. Very little it appears at the moment that you can do about it. Sixty-three in front, red colour. There's no formality. Flying ball dispatched. You know when he went out to Atlantic City in September to play in the US Open nine ball. Twenty. Judd Trump tacked on at the end a snooker exhibition in Seattle, 21. Washington, in the Pacific Northwest. He went all across country to play that exhibition. Made so many friends there. He is a world traveller and a world 26. class player with no weakness. 27. And let's not forget, 34. he trailed 3 0. This is going to be 9 out of the last 10 35. frames. And he won 16 in a row before that. Yeah, 9 out of 10. And for me, the way he won the previous frame, that was 10 out of 10. 40. 41. Is it going to be a hat-trick of defeats in finals for John Higgins? It sure looks that way. 46. So, 47. This has been a very eye-catching mini-session. 54. 56. Also, Alan, worth bearing in mind, at the moment, he's lost only five frames in the tournament. 59. 63. 68. 68 and another Frank. quiet spell by his standards. It's quite clear that Judd Trump is back and he's one frame away from being crowned champion of champions.
Well, the match stats make tough reading for John Higgins. He trails Judd Trump by nine frames to four. Total points scored there tell their own story. Judd winning nine of the last ten frames. In fact, he's lost just five frames all tournament. And Stephen Hendry and Neil Folds alongside me watching this one. Stephen, it looks very ominous for John Higgins at this uh, mid-session interval. Yeah, Judd has, has, um, has smelt blood tonight. He's come out um, you know, from the very first shot looking like um, it's his title and, and, he, and he's not going to let John into the match. Um, <clears throat> totally dominating the game. Again, no centuries or anything, but he's just he's totally dominating almost every, every aspect of the game and, and, and John is beginning to look weaker and weaker as the night goes on. You've, you, you've pointed out when we've been watching the match just the body language of the two players mm. as well, very different. Yeah, I, I think even, even if you look at the, both players' faces, I mean, you, you obviously you can, you can make an, an argument for John had a long match last night, um, but I think it, possibly that's an ingredient, but possibly just because I don't think he's got an answer um, against Judd Trump. Has he got an answer? Well, not from here, I don't think. But, you know, I agree with Stephen. You know, he's been ruthless tonight, Judd, and that's what champions do. You know, that's what Stephen did and, and all these great players do. They, they, they see a bit of weakness or vulnerability and they just go straight in. And he has played ever so well tonight. I mean, it started straight away here. Frame 10, immediately, this is a very clean pot. And mm. he made his intentions known from this break, you know, break of 74. But it was just the way that he made it. He got on the black perfectly, opened the reds up gets things going quickly, you know. You know from 3-0 down, he had a good afternoon session and he really had something to build on here. And he just went about his business so well. And this is the kind of form we've seen all week, really. It's just coming almost to a peak tonight. And that's what these guys do. That's what Judd has always done. You know, get going nicely here. You know, on to, to frame 11. I mean, we see the other side of his game here. We know what, that he can play safe. This was actually the shot that won in this frame. I know he's 44 nil up, but he gets right in behind the brown, and, and it's not a nice shot for, for John Higgins at all. You know, he, he got out of it to, a, to an extent. He was a bit unlucky here, you know. I mean, mm, he didn't play a bad shot. I mean, I didn't expect him, Stephen, what you thought, but he ends up leaving a red, which didn't even look like on here. That right-hand red goes. Yeah, I mean, it virtually landed the cue ball in the only place that would leave Judd Trump an, an easy red. Um, but yeah, it was, you know, and then Judd Trump goes on again, you know, I, don't, I still don't think he's had an, uh, he's the cue ball on a string today, but he, j he just keeps potting balls. You know, again, see, he's not ni nice on the ping, but pink's frame balls, so he doesn't try and do anything uh, with the cue ball here at all. You know, it's, it's get, the frame, get the frames on the board. Um, this was the frame that, that, that I think has sealed John's fate. He shouldn't have lo lost his frame. He was in, um, you know, at a good 40-odd point lead. Um, a lot of the reds were safe. Judd gains control of the frame, and with that snooker, um, this, this was a, the, the, the result he gets in. And the brown, you know, nice cannon. Okay, the, this, this red is not easy. Alan said in commentary it was a big shot. It was a big shot because it was missable, and all the reds are in the open. He probably would have lost the frame. But, it, but he's, he's making the big shots. He, he doesn't look like missing the, the important shots, and that's the thing, isn't it, Neil? Yeah, it is, and, and that, that, I like that shot. I thought it was well cued. Now it's a question of this is a must-win frame for John Higgins, absolutely must-win. Um, but, I mean, it's easy to say this, and it's a bit of a cliche. I thought that was a tired shot from John. He just looks like he's a little bit um, jaded mentally, maybe physically, I don't know. He's had a great week, but it looks like it's going to be bridged too far, this one. He got in here, Judd, and, and um, we thought he was going to win the frame. We see a shot in a minute when we're sort of not entirely sure about this. He has a little look across now. Uh, does he play this shot? Alan thought so. I wouldn't argue with Alan. But I, I still <laughs> feel that, even if he did play it, it's still a bit of a fluke. You can't really know whether this is going to go in. But what it did do, it won in the frame because he, you know, he tucked John up behind the black, gave him some of his own treatment here. Didn't even hit one, so mm. everything's gone wrong at this stage. You can tell by John, as soon as he's virtually as soon as he's hit the cue ball, he's on the walk back to the seat. That's kind of a resigned yeah. way to be as a snooker player. You don't even wait to see what the result is. You kind of know what the result is and you're, and you're back to your seat already. When you're playing catch-up snooker like that as well, you, you need to take on the attacking shots. You need to push yourself. Now, he's gone for 16 long pots and only made six of them. Yeah. Judd's gone for 17 and made 13 of them. There's the difference. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think in all departments now, I think Judd's is dominating the match. Um, you know, it, it's, you can't see a way back for John now. It's a matter of time. It's not if, not, not if it's when. Listen, after the break, we will have the conclusion of this week's Champion of Champions, Judd Trump, with one hand on the trophy, one of the few major titles that has so far eluded him. We'll find out if he can lift this one after the break.
Judd Trump is one frame away from being crowned the 2021 champion of champions. He is 9-4 up against the 2016 champion John Higgins. Ken Doherty has joined Dave Hendon in the commentary box to take us to, to the conclusion of the match. But first to reintroduce the players, here's Tahir Hajat. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome back to the arena, John Higgins and Judd Trump. and Judd Trump a big favourite to get his hands on that trophy for the first time having lost in two champion of champions finals John Higgins needs the mother and the grandmother of all comebacks here even for him it seems a tall order let's see he's got to take you, it frame one frame 14. at a time it's been a miserable John evening Higgins for the Scotsman but the evening's not over yet No, not over yet. And there's a lot of pride at stake, of course, for John Higgins, but Judd Trump has been absolutely awesome tonight in every department. And what can John do? As I said, he a lot of pride at stake. He doesn't want to lose every frame this evening. One. He's not one for making excuses, John, but just on reflection, Dave, but I think he has looked a little bit tired tonight. Maybe that match last night did take a bit out of him. Not taking anything away from Judd Trump the way he's played, though. Well, there's a shot once again. Is a little bit careless. We've seen a few of these shots tonight from John Higgins. Not normal. Should have been a little bit. In the middle of the table with the cue ball there. Seven. He covered well. Well, he's at that stage now where you've just got to throw everything at your opponent, see what happens. He once beat Trump in Shanghai in the final there. 14. 10-9 from 7-2 down. But that was a long time ago now, a decade ago. Trump's a different man. He's got the all-round game. We've seen it tonight to great effect. 15. Well, this is handy that the bottom red just to the left is potable into the right corner because when he pots this, it'll 22. be down into the pack of reds and it should be opening quite a few reds from this shot. Got to find the colour though. Yeah, it wasn't a great spot. 23. Spread. Could have been a bit kinder to him. Yeah, when you go into the pack with that pace, you're expecting a, at least a couple more reds to come out. Of to the open. John Higgins, 23. Well, he's trying to make something happen, playing it with a lot of you see the cue coming up off the bridge hand. Trying to put a lot of power into that shot. It's actually been a bit fortunate he didn't go into the pack because he definitely would have left Judd something. But this is typical of what Judd has done today and indeed this evening. And he's had to, he's really concentrated, played some really good safety.
And David, you've watched him for many years now. Have you got a radio open there? Just see how much of a different player he is. Over these last like three, four seasons in particular, with all the tournaments he's won, he's completely sort of, you know, a rounded and much more mature type of game now. Yeah, he's found the winning formula, and he's found that winning's fun. <laughs> yeah. And uh, he's, if he wins tonight, that's 16 oh. titles from his last 19 finals. So that just shows you incredible conversion rate. You know, if you get to a final, you're going to be playing a top player. So really is a remarkable series of success that shows no signs of abating. Yeah. And a couple of those finals, he only <laughs> lost by the hot frame. I mean, it's incredible strike rate. Anxiously having a look is Judd Trump on this red into the right center. I think he is. One. So as the red goes in, first chance for Trump to get this one title he's been targeting he was very uh, vocal earlier in the year about the need to move snooker on and not Five. be stuck in the past and try new things and that's certainly been the case here this week with the clothing and various other innovations like everything else these days they've split Six. opinion but Trump is very much on board with trying to find a new audience for the sport The main thing players can do, though, is play at the highest level in finals like this, win trophies, inspire hey. the next generation, hopefully. Yeah, and that's the one Nine. great thing about Trump. You know, he expresses himself, he plays some naughty snooker, as he said, some great shots, exhibition-type shots at the end of frames, and, and that can only bring a young generation into the game. You had the great Alex Higgins in the 80s and Jimmy White in the 90s doing that sort of stuff. Ronnie O'Sullivan carried it on. And then Joe Trump is doing that. It's great to see. Seventeen. Lost the first frame of the tournament, didn't he? To David Lilly, who in fact today has won the first Q Tour event for the new series down in Brighton, so he's gainfully employed. Trump then, of course, went on to win 6 0 against Ryan Day, 6 0 against Karen Wilson. This was close, 3 0 down, he was in trouble, but looking to run out, comfortable winner here. Yeah, nine of the last ten frames he's won. 32. This one B is most important. You will need one of those two reds that are tied up on the left hand side cushion, but I'm not going to worry about them just yet. Just try and tidy up these loose 33. reds. 10 points in the lead. third final in a row for John Higgins the first 40. two he lost in deciders this one he was in early control but did seem to the wheels did seem to come off this afternoon and then had to start well tonight and, well clearly just uh, couldn't quite cut it Judd Trump had him in trouble and that third frame of the night was a big one Higgins once he lost that looked a little deflated
quick look at the scoreboard. 25 points 48. in the lead. Who would have been doing his calculations. He knows he's going to need one of those safe reds. 49. Not a kiss. So before he may play the pink here. Yellow is no good, it's taken him down to the end of the table. Cue ball have to travel a long distance, so it's pink into the bottom left hand corner pocket is probably best choice. Could even take it into the left center. Just having a look at the angle. Oh, it's just a fabulous shot. Excellent shot. 55. He's got all the shots in his armory. Now, when putting this red, he'll be determined to leave a nice angle on green or brown here. Fifty-six. Good attempt, was 36 points ahead. Just one red required. And this would be a clever shot. Try and clip the red, hit the brown full ball, and try and knock that onto the ball cushion into a safe area. Well, maybe he's just trying to go through the gap. That's yeah, pretty 59. good. There. Go through the gap and try and sneak a jump. Yeah, so Trump just having to wait. He needs one more red to get his hands on his first title since he won the Gibraltar Open in March. Of course, there hasn't been an event every week since then, far from it. But it will be his first one of the season. new home for the event here in Bolton. The crowds have been terrific and I'm sure many of them would like to see more snooker tonight. <laughs> so John Higgins will be getting good support. Mm. 50. Yeah, I must say, I think this has been a wonderful venue for snooker and the champion of champions. Crowds have really been fantastic all week. Great atmosphere tonight. And once again, a top quality return of safety from Judd Trump. John Higgins tapping the table with his cue in acknowledgement. And this is what he's done so well today, Judd Trump. As well as potting his break building. Just he's really matched John Higgins in every single department. That could be the end. This red is available. One. Well, every credit. It takes great nerve to win these finals. And to beat a great player like John Higgins, in the end, this comfortably. What a way to open your account for the season. I get the feeling it will not be his last trophy this campaign. Six. Seven. Yeah, top quality performance from Judd Trump. 
and I'm sure John Higgins will be the first to congratulate him on how well he's played. Well, all the titles he's won the last few years. It's like we've already known it. Now we can say it. Judge Trump, Judge Trump is the Panama. champion of champions. John Higgins made the running in this final. He led 3 0, but Judge Trump got better and better as the day went on. Tonight was an all round masterclass. He gets the 150,000 first prize and the trophy. He's beaten John Higgins by 10 frames to four. Well, the crowd are on their feet. They have been wonderful and wonderful supporters all week here in Bolton. Judd just looked up there to his brother and his supporters. He's waited a long time to be crowned champion of champions, but that is indeed what he is. And let's get some reaction now from both players with Rob Walker. Ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause, please, for two of the greats at the end of a brilliant week here in Bolton. John, we were so excited about tonight's session, especially because you nicked the last this afternoon, just one in it, yeah. but he was too good. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I thought Judd was awesome. Uh, if I'm being hypercritical, when I went 3-1 in front, I had a couple of chances that you've got to really capitalise on against someone as good as Judd. And I went walkabout for about three or four frames, and then Judd just grew and grew in strength, and then he just blitzed me tonight. So, yeah, far too good, far too good. It was a brilliant run to the final, and I know you are a great champion and you never make excuses, but was there any fatigue after the late-night finish against Jan? No, no, I felt great. No, I felt, I felt great and I, I got off to a great start. But uh, as I said, missed a couple and then it, 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 it all went sort of pear-shaped. But I'd like to say a special mention to the Bolton crowd because I, for the whole week... <laughs> for, uh, for the whole week, I think, for all the players, the atmosphere they've created, it's been one of the best weeks I've played as a snooker professional, so every credit to them, they're brilliant. Yeah, yeah. And John, you have got the mentality of a winner and a champion, so it's quite a strange situation because to make three major finals in the space of five or six weeks is a phenomenal achievement, mm. but you're hungry for your maiden title this season. Uh -huh. Metaphorically and literally, <laughs> after losing four stone, ladies and gents. Uh -huh. But you, I hope you do realise you have still got what it takes at this level because no one else has made three major finals already this season. Yeah, I mean, listen, I mean, it's, it's obviously an, an achievement, but you, you obviously want to win events and I've lost three now on the trot, so it's not a great feeling, but I, I can hold my hands up and say I've lost to three unbelievable champions. So, and Judd's top of the tree as well. So, it was amazing. Spoken with such grace, ladies and gentlemen, John Higgins. <laughs> Judd, you've worked so hard for this title. It's one of the only big ones missing from your collection until now. Third time lucky in the Champion of Champions final. Yeah, it's, it's an absolutely amazing feeling to get this one under my belt. Um, but just on, on what John said, really, um, the crowd here has been amazing for a new venue. Has been, the support has been superb for every player, I think. And we, we both felt that um, when we stood up stage, just sort of waiting to come out, the noise was amazing. So, so excited to play in a final. Um, and yeah, it just felt like I've been on a bit of a, a drought that everyone keeps saying that I haven't won a tournament for a while. So. Um, John's been amazing all season and I've been watching him at, at home sort of getting to every final and wishing I was here um, but yeah I, I think John was in control obviously early, early on and just missed one or two that he wouldn't normally miss probably down to him the late finish um, yesterday but any win against John is absolutely incredible because he's someone that I always admire growing up.
And, that, and that's mutual because when I spoke to John last night, I said, look, you know, is Judd on his way to becoming one of the greats? And he said unequivocally, Judd's already one of the greats. And that's quite some declaration from a man who's won 31 major ranking titles. I think he realises he's in the presence of, of someone very special. And bearing in mind how comprehensive your victory has been, where does this sit? in the pantheon of everything you've won so far. It's got to be fairly close to the top, hasn't it? I mean, any win against him is special. Um, and there's been times when I was first coming through where I've been 4-0 up, 7-2 up, and every time he comes back against me and beats me, there was a bad one in Shanghai, I'll never forget. Um, but it's put me in the position I am today. And as I said before, any game against him is incredible for me. Um, and I love playing him. I, I still learn... Still, still willing to learn, still trying to learn from him. And um, yeah, the, the utmost respect for John. And again, spoken with great, great grace. You're still developing, you're still learning. Do you think this could be a kickstart for a great run now between here and the end of the season? It's, it's so tough to say, really, that the standard is so high um, nowadays. Any, any final you reach is incredible. So. Um, to, to just get this one under my belt early on in the season again and hopefully I can take some momentum from here. Um, and yeah, everyone seems to say that I only win little events, so I wonder if this one classes as a big one. I think it does, doesn't it, ladies and gents? And Judd, it was my privilege to interview you a couple of times at Milton Keynes, that they did a great job for us there behind closed doors. How special to win here with a packed crowd and your brothers here somewhere. It'll be quite some night when we go off air, won't it? Well, we've got a big tournament coming up in York next week. So this is a, a big stepping stone. I've got a nice drive home now. Um, but the, the atmosphere has been absolutely incredible. And as I said before, for a new venue, it's been up there one of the best tournaments we've ever played in. Well, you've waited a long time to get your hands on that magnificent trophy. The presentation comes soon. Judd Trump, you are at last the champion of champions. Ladies and gentlemen, to help present the awards, can you please give a round of applause for our presentation party, Emily Fraser, Managing Director of Matru Multisport, and Mike Mannering, Kazoo Head of Sponsorship. Of course, ladies and gentlemen, there can only be one winner, but this year's runners-up, please, ladies and gentlemen, taking away £50,000, make some noise. Let's hear it for the Wizard of Wishaw, John Higgins! And receiving the Kazoo Trophy and the Champion of Champions Cup and title, also winning £150,000. Ladies and gentlemen, your 2021 Kazoo Champion of Champions, the ace in the pack, Judd Trump! Trump has done a similar thing, um, just a totally dominant performance and without, I think, being at his brilliant best. 
Yeah, I, I, he's shown me this week new areas to his game. I thought he had reached a peak where, with the scoring, he won the World Championship final against John Higgins a couple of years ago. I thought that was as good as it's going to get, but in different ways, he's showing me new things that he's got to his game, and he was just a dominant performance, not all day, but pretty much all week. And receiving the acclaim of the crowd here in both they don't look like they want to go home anytime soon Stephen I think they've enjoyed what they've seen this week it's a the first time we've come here for the champion of champions and I think they've played their part this week too oh without a doubt I mean you, you know the, the couple of years we've had with no crowds was it was great to still have snooker on but this is what it's all about playing an atmosphere like this and, and I think the crowd would have probably liked a closer match tonight a closer final but um, they're watching you know the, probably the best player in the game tonight um, you know, as I said, maybe not his brilliant best, but do, you know, put in a totally dominant performance. Yeah, and I think you know we, we bring together the 16 top players. They're all champions, and they're here by virtue of the, the high ranking they have. Uh, and and the crowd respond to that. They enjoy what they've been seeing, and they've been good, good supporters all week. I think that's right, Jill. I think they enjoy embracing that the, a guy who conducts himself the way Judd does and he's a flag bearer for our sport now he is the best player in the world he's kind of proved it this week yes there's a lot of tournaments on the horizon and he'll want to keep proving it but he's been absolutely outstanding brilliant great stuff well listen there he is our 2021 champion of champions judge trump plenty more analysis and reaction coming up after the break